What's up, everybody? Joining us tonight are some Canadian True Crime podcasts because I've gotten a few messages. We have Christy Lee from Canadian oh, True shit. Crime, Jordan B from Hi. Nighttime Pod, and Jack Howdy. Luna from Dark Topic, and some guy named Justin. Hi. Uh, I'm not Canadian. What's more? What's more <laughs> political than? There's nothing more political than. Uh, than having a, a not all encompassing list of podcasts. Here are three guys, three people whose podcasts have red in the logo. You'll get a message from some like person like, there's also red in, you know, do, 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 do. Anyway. you <laughs> must invite every single Canadian true crime podcast in the history of podcasting. Yeah, regardless if they have an episode. Uh, yeah. Christy and I, uh, we, we've been, um, you can tell we have some bad blood about this. When we did a, a live event in, Toronto two years ago, we made the mistake of calling it like a Canadian, Canadian crime, crime podcasting event. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, which, uh, yeah. Didn't, <laughs> didn't go, go well. down so well. Did, did, did you have <laughs> non Canadian it was fun, right? though. <laughs> Yeah. And then you did well, an yeah. event last year, right? Yeah, and that was, was better. We changed the name. We called it True Crime Podcast Live in Toronto, Toronto, and nobody can argue about that. So mm -hmm. that went okay. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's a guy somewhere. Oh, I'm sure there is. <laughs> and then there was someone who didn't join us. That was Jack. Right, Jack? You didn't show up? Yeah, I didn't show up the second time. I was there the first time. And that oh, was, uh, yeah, yeah, I was there the first time. And because it was, I wasn't uh, there the second time, so I was worried that you didn't show up because I was there. Well, there could only be one bald dude that shows up to the show. But... <laughs> I didn't know you were bald. Well, uh, no, I don't have the balls to do what you're doing right now, man. Good for yeah, you. They got hide behind a toque. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. No, you had a good reason for not being in the second one. If we had had Jack in there with the timing for the second one, we would have had an angry mob show up. Oh, my God. We don't need to get God. into that. <laughs> As far as I know, everyone loves Jack. And by the way, if you don't know Jack, he's one of the best, if not the best narrator of any show I've heard. Very Thanks, good sir. at narrating the stories that he covers. Well, also awesome at just discussion and humor. Your newest show, 911 Calls podcast, is like right now it's the only thing I listen to. I can honestly say like my heart hasn't pounded as much listening to a podcast as it does during that show. Like I freak out, uh, but then I also laugh. So it's killer. I love the <laughs> operator. Yeah. Thank you, man. That's high praise from you. Yeah. It's, it's been, uh, it's been interesting. It's dicey doing 911 calls because, you know, you're dealing with people in a lot of cases that are, you know, they, they've died, they've died on the call and I go into them not knowing what's going on. So I might make a few jokes about something and find out later that the person has died on the call. And I look like a total asshole more so than usual. Right. But it's been fun. I, I, I actually got a complaint because I did a promo on my episodes for your show, the 911 Calls podcast. I actually got a complaint from a listener who thought my ad was too intense because it included a little clip of like the clip of the 911 call of like the chimpanzee. Where it's like, she, he's tearing her face off. Someone thought that that was uh -huh. way too much for an ad. So too, thanks. I hope too you intense. Uh, enjoyed that ad being in my show. Yeah. Wait, like the, what, I don't know if you know. The we're all, we're all into. Well, but it's just lame because we're all into true crime. Like we know what we're about, son. Why, yeah. How can it be too intense? <laughs> I should give the uh, that listener your email address, and you guys can work it out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they always have a complaint, don't they? Uh, yeah. Just any, just in case some of the people in the audience haven't heard of this nine one one show. Jack, can you tell them the title? Nine one one calls podcast with the operator. Uh, the operator is not a 911 operator. He's just a, a weirdo from Antarctica that kind of made up the whole situation's really screwed up. You got to check it out to know what's going on. He's got an accent from everywhere and uh, it helps us get away with quite a bit. He can act like he doesn't quite understand anything and I don't think he understands quite a bit, right? So just stepping into hot water over and over and over again in that podcast. It's been a lot of fun. 911 calls podcast with the operator. Subscribe wherever you listen. Yeah. There you go. Could I smoke in there or what? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank I you. love it too. <laughs> so. 
Yeah, you, 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 guys, if you haven't heard of Generation Y, Generation Y is a pretty good podcast, too. I've been around a minute. <laughs> Justin, do you have a question? Some, some glitch, glitch just happened. Is anyone happened. else on this thing? Is anyone else talking? I s okay. <laughs> yeah, I got this. I'm here, but I Justin, you're like, frozen. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you can all hear me, right? Well, it's the Jack, internet. you're frozen. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Yeah, everyone's frozen but think, yourselves, so it's all good. Push the button um, on the internet box. Okay, cool. I think we'll it's that internet. Um, it's that internet basement. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's so, the cable that um, runs from Canada to the United Jack, States. Jack and I had a conversation the other day. I think there's an animal chewing on it. Um, oh, damn it. <laughs> what kind of animal? It's a beaver. What kind of Canadian animal would do that? It's yeah. a beaver. beaver. A be beaver. Right, so, I got a question here. I got a co <laughs> beaver. The American pronunciation. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> the other day, I was at, uh, I was talking to Jack, and we were talking about uh, what inspired him to start, especially a true crime specific show. So uh, that would be my question. I'll, I'll start with you, Jordan, just because your face happens to be next to mine. <laughs> so, when did you start, and what inspired you? Weird. Uh, I started like 2015 ish, I think 2015, 2016. And I think at that time, like podcasting and podcasts were so much different in terms of production. It was way less production, way looser. And like the shows that I was listening to were very much just a guy or, you know, two random people just talking about cool stuff. Um, yeah. I just immediately got really into podcasts, seeing it as almost like this renaissance of like cool radio shows or something. But anyway, there just wasn't much coverage of anything Canadian, really. There was no big Canadian shows at that time, especially none covering, you know, UFOs in Atlanta, Canada and missing pe person cases around Canada and stuff. So I just thought, you know, if some of the other shows I was listening to, I was like, if they can do it, I can probably do it half decent job. And I made a few episodes and people listened. So I made a few more. And now five years later, I'm still doing yeah. it. So. That's it, really. That's cool. Who wants to go? Uh, you had, um, I had a better story. <laughs> you had covered UFO stories a few times. What's the last one that you covered? Uh, a really cool one. Uh, just uh, in my neighborhood, um, a guy uh, filmed a UFO and he put it up on the internet, and it ended up kind of going viral. Like he he saw something in the sky that a lot of people just thought was a weird cloud, but. Um, what made the video so cool is he was uh, like a delivery driver. Cause you know, with the pandemic and all that delivery drivers are busy. So he was out delivering food or something. And he saw this thing in the sky and he pulled over his car and he ran over to this apartment building to an area that he thought was just this public kind of um, walkway. But it turned out what it actually was, was he, he's filming a UFO, what he thinks is a UFO and narrating it being like, you know, what is this crazy thing in the sky? And as he walks on what he thinks is like a public walkway on the side of this apartment building, he's actually walking onto somebody's patio in their private area. And there must have been a lot of kind of trouble about who can use this private space, because as he's filming a UFO, this random dude like comes around the corner with a two by four, basically saying like, what are you doing? You can't be here. And the guy says, you know, I'm filming. You know, there's a UFO in the sky. I'm just filming it. And the guy with the two by four is like, it's a weather balloon. And then the two of them start arguing about what it is in the sky as the guy is the two by four. But uh, anyway, so I did an episode that's just like telling the story of that sighting. And it has a few people, um, friends from the podcast world kind of chiming in on what they thought the dude saw in the sky that night. So that's the latest one. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Inspiration question. Do you want to go? Who wants to go? Jack or Christy? Figure it out. Yeah. Hi, Christy. Me? All right. <laughs> All right. I'll go. I'll go. I was uh, inspired. Well, not inspired, but I was looking for this for podcasting. I didn't even know it existed. 
and I came across True Murder, the most shocking killers in true crime history and the authors who have written about them by Dan Sapansky. <laughs> and he's Canadian. He lives just, he lives close to me. And I was listening yeah, to that. I was does. like, man, I can, yeah, he lives pretty close to me. I moved out here from where Christy lives around. I used to live in Ontario. Um, moved out here and I ended up pretty close to where he's at. So I'm listening to him and I'm like, hear a guy throwing up on his podcast and no nobody's showing up on the line like it's really like you know grassroots podcast guerrilla podcasting it sound like i was like well if this guy could do it then i could do it you know so that's what started it for me also jordan though jordan's jordan's my like uh podcasting i don't know big brother i, I consider oh, thanks, him that bro. yeah so that's it. I don't want to. I don't want to trash Zipanski too much because he lives nearby. I think he has a criminal history too. So I'm not going to go on too much about that. What? <laughs> Ouch. But I, I think you uh, look it up. You you oh, you shit. uh, you did reach out to him though once on Facebook. Stop with it. A... Okay, Justin. <laughs> Set me up. Okay, we need to know about this now. Okay. Sound like he's so, going to be listening. No, he's not. No, I don't know if he knows how to use a computer. <laughs> Let it oh, rip, Jack. Hey, <laughs> All right, so he had he had a Facebook profile, and you know, like he had a background kind of like Chrissy's right now, but it was like a sunset, and I recognized it as being on my own laptop. He just had a background. He wasn't actually at the beach in his picture. <laughs> so my brother and I, Leroy, we uh, imposed the weekend at Bernie's guy in front of that same sunset <laughs> and started messaging him, and then he blocked me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's that. That's what he's not yeah, here tonight. He won't be ever story, anywhere. Remember man. when <laughs> he had he got a virus once and he started uh, spamming a whole bunch of people on Facebook, and I got this spam message from him, and um, I can't even remember what it was now. But every it was, there was like this big uproar about. Dan Zipansky trying to um what's the word for it fishing everybody <laughs> he's a he's yeah, a, yeah. He's a yeah. funny guy <laughs> yeah they call him the they call him the godfather of podcasting some people do true crime garage does i think i mean he's kind of the og for true crime podcasting he was around before even us aaron and i when we started it when it wasn't cool at all. <laughs> so. uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Justin and Aaron. Were, were you like maybe the first two who did the co-host style format with True Crime? Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, the two friends get together, talk about, you know, a case. Um, we definitely were the first ones doing that. But when we started, it was Dan Zapansky and maybe one other true crime podcast. I don't remember. Do you remember what the other one was, Aaron? Like serial killer something? Yeah, it was like this. It was like the serial killer podcast, but they didn't they weren't around very long and they didn't make that many episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Dan Zapansky. I, I didn't even ever like listen to it. So I honestly don't know what their story is. Yeah. So what was but yeah, but like Dan Zipanski was kind of like, he, I don't know, I'd never listened to the show, but his is a lot of interviews and stuff. But now yeah. if you look at like true crime podcasts, of course, are huge, but all of them are using your format for the most part. Like, it's very rare that it's a, a solo host. It's always, you know, uh, two friends and, you know, and then some other thing like two friends plus, uh, you know, sewing and serial killers. And it's two friends talk about sewing and serial killing. It's, it's it's funny because I will meet people and they're like, oh, you have a podcast? What's it about? And I'm like, oh, it's my friend Aaron and I and we talk about true crime things. And they're like, oh, that's original. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So whatever. <laughs> All right, Christy, you're up. Um, my story is not very exciting. I was basically just um, listening to podcasts. I was listening to a lot of, um, I like the single narrator um kind of reading from a script type one. So I was listening to Case File and They Walk Among Us and um, Fell in True Crime, which I miss. He doesn't he doesn't um, produce episodes anymore. But anyway, um, around the same time, um, I just kind of noticed that no one was really covering true crime on a case by case basis in Canada and solved cases. And obviously we had Jordan out there, but you know, he liked all that weird stuff about aliens and whatever. Um, 
and then there was someone know something and that was kind of like a, a long form. So I just kind of decided to set myself a challenge and learn a new skill set. And um, I, I didn't really do it to make a podcast and gain an audience. I just kind of thought, oh, well, people want this. So I want to learn how to do it. And so I did. And then, yeah, here I am. Totally burnt out. No. <laughs> you, were, you were burnt out when I met you to make an announcement years ago. Here? I, I, I was burnt out from episode six. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you're still here. What's happening? I don't know. My, Do you need uh, help? My... <laughs> oh, yes, I need a lot of help. We're not the ones to help you. We'll talk you into staying, remaining on as a host of Canadian True Crime. Well, well I have to now because I quit my job. <laughs> you don't have oh. to work. No, no, I actually, it's weird. I, I quit my job in March thinking, yeah, I'll be able to work on this, um, this whole thing during the day and not have to work nights anymore. And, um, and then COVID-19 hit. So now I'm like a permanent homeschooler um, and I'm back to working nights again. So I don't know, like my life has just turned into a dumpster fire along with everybody else's, but um, yeah, I, I, it's funny since I quit my job, I, I, I've been really enjoying it so much more. <laughs> like since I, I can focus on it, even though, you know, my kids are around during the day and whatnot. Um, it, it's a lot more enjoyable when you don't have to also worry about working your nine to five with a, you know, commute to downtown Toronto thrown in. So yeah, I'm, I'm lucky, but you know, I worked really hard. So, you know. Jordan knows. <laughs> I uh, yeah. I complained to yeah, him many I, times I deal with about. Some of the um, I want to give this up. Oh, I don't know where it's going. Yeah. So, but you know, I I keep going. Um, there was always something you, in me. I just wanted to keep going, and uh, and I'm glad that I did. Sorry. The the style of your show, it's like you made it hard on yourself because you basically like. The way I, what I've told you before, it's like you write and record an audiobook every second week. Yeah, I hate it. Like if I could go back, I would, I would totally do like a crime junkie, you know? <laughs> just, no, I'm you kidding. Could, yeah, you would have I, just ripped off, I would have ripped off Gen Y had I known. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is like, I'm a writer by trade, I guess you could say. Like I, I worked in marketing communications for 20 years so writing was always my thing. I'm not an overly conversational kind of person. And so it was always kind of the writing part was always a big deal for me. Um, but yeah, if I could do it again, I would go for less of a deep dive because I sometimes I'm just like, oh, I just really don't want to get so bogged down in the details. But, you know, once you establish a brand and, and an audience and people expect a certain thing, um, it's kind of hard to to break out of that mold as you know jack <laughs> yeah yeah i do christy and i actually started at the same time and uh we're both doing similar numbers at this point too which is kind of cool no we're not you're killing me you're killing you're killing everybody <laughs> yeah for a second i was looking if he was serious I was like, this guy's fucking crazy <laughs> jordan won't let you get away with this nonsense no. <laughs> yeah he knows how bad it is over right, we do have a question from the audience. They're asking if you could name the worst case you ever covered. And I don't know if that means the one you're most embarrassed about or if, the, if it's literally the worst crime. You can answer it however you want. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with mine. It's pretty obvious because I'm in Nova Scotia. And just three weeks ago, four weeks ago, we had Canada's worst mass murder happened, you know, just an hour outside of where I live. And uh, I did one episode about it so far. My next two episodes are going to be covering it as well. But that one was, um, I would say easily like the most sensitive thing I covered, especially so like I even had like a good friend whose husband is a cop and he was, he lived, but he was shot by the gunman during the wow. shooting. And so it was really heavy, but that was um, that event. I guess it's, you couldn't say I've, I covered anything worse because that's probably one of Canada's darkest. Christy. If anyone doesn't, if anyone doesn't know that story, it's, I'm sure it's been in the news, but basically a guy, um, he's a denturist by trade, but 
he dressed up as a police officer and drove a cop car that he made in his garage that looked identical to a real cop car. And he just drove around killing people, including like even doing traffic stops. Like he'd pull people over and walk up to their car and shoot them. It's a pretty nutty story, but anyway. Is there anything else, uh, like what's the word on the street, Jordan, down there now that the kind of national media has died down about it? Yeah, it's really what now is what a lot of what's coming out is just the little red flags and things leading up to, to the attack that the gunman was involved in. There's been quite a bit, like what, what came out last week is uh, a group of media companies like CBC and a few others, they've been um, lobbying the courts to get access to the information that was used to get search warrants. Because I guess when you get a search warrant, you need to give evidence that the warrant's justified and explain what you expect to find. So anyway, they, did, they got search warrants for all his different properties and his phone and cars and all this stuff. Um, what just came out last week was the information they, or the, the applications they made to get these search warrants. So it gives an idea of what information the police actually have on this, this person. Uh, a lot of it was redacted, so you miss a lot, but there's enough there that it really paints a disturbing picture of somebody who was um, deep into domestic abuse, uh, super volatile and violent, and made no secret about the fact that he had quite a few firearms, many of which were illegal. And he also didn't hide the fact that he had police memorabilia uniforms and made police cars, basically. He bought like uh, three or four of them from like a scrapyard and he was restoring them. And he even got like the decals and the lights and all this stuff. When, when he was doing this, you couldn't tell his car from the other police cars. In fact, his was better in better shape than some of the police cars. He had this thing added to the front that allowed him to ram other cars. So he killed a cop and they think that um, the the way he modified his car allowed him to do it because he had something on the front that allowed him to hit her car head on. And then he just got out of his car firing and murdered her on the side of the highway, took her gun and somebody pulled over to help him or to help them thinking two police officers had a car accident. The guy who got out to help he shot him and took his car. So it's just, so the whole thing is insane. When you go through the timeline of the things that he did, it's over a period of 13 hours. It's completely nuts. And you'll notice that Jordan's not mentioning the guy's name, which I think is cool, Jordan. That's, uh, well, uh, that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, well, you know what? To be honest, it's not because of any uh, virtuous reason. It's, I have someone, uh, a loved one who has the same name as this guy. And I'd be happy if this guy's name fades into oblivion. What's funny is my first son, uh, his name before he was born was actually Luca. And then oh. Luca Magnata did all that stuff. And we're like, change it. And we changed it. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I named my son Ted Bundy. That was a, that was a mess. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my, um, my most memorable case, I guess, it's the one that affected me the most is, um, and I, my answer hasn't changed for several years. It's Victoria Stafford, who was um, an eight-year-old girl from Ontario who was abducted by a man and his girlfriend. And I won't go into details, but, um, you know, her body was found three months later and it was just horrific the whole thing and I covered it in a three-part series and it really affected me just having to go like go through all of like what happened to her was so um so detailed and having to picture all the details and figure out which ones to um, put into my episode and which ones to leave out. And um, at that point, I wasn't contacting the, the families of the victims. But since then, her father has actually contacted me. And, uh, and as Aaron and uh, Jordan know, he was at our Toronto event. And so we're quite friendly now. But that's, um, that's definitely that will always be my the case that I hold dear to my heart. And also because I have a, a daughter myself, she's six. Um, it, it's really hard to cover these awful cases involving kids when you have kids of your own, but mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's important. So, yeah. 
Yeah. You said he was at the he was at one of the events, Christy? Yeah, Rod, Rodney Stafford came to uh, the second Toronto event. Oh, he did. Wow. Yeah. So he was on um, stage and everything. Yeah, oh. he he's such he's such a nice guy, like salt of the earth kind of guy, and um, he's still like fighting for justice for Tori because you know her her murder is um, keep getting this soft Canadian justice touch. Um, you know, being moved into from maximum security into minimum security and then being moved into an Aboriginal healing lodge when they're not even close to the end of their sentence. And, um, you know, the families of the victims are not told about all of these movements and it just ended up being this big thing. So he, I guess he's made it his life's mission to continue fighting for, for justice for her. So yeah, whenever he has a new um, a new fundraising or um, like a a mission, um, sometimes they go to Parliament Hill and they protest. Um, I always you know kind of help him with publicity for that with my audience. Um, so yeah, it's I don't know, it's just one of those things that really stays with you, you know different with kids for sure I can't I can't even cover stuff with kids it's too much yeah I mean the case I'm working on at the moment is one that Rodney introduced me to the survivor and it's unfortunately another another child sexual assault case and um this this guy who who I'll I'll who I've been communicating with the whole time obviously he's just so inspiring and it's hard. It's really hard for me to cover these cases and um, regular listeners know I don't cover cases involving children that often, but you know, this, this guy really wants to spread his message of, of hope and, and uh, awareness and that type of thing. So, um, you know, it, it kind of makes me feel good to, to help them spread their messages. So yeah, occasionally I will cover a, a child case, but generally I, I prefer to stay away because it, it just gets too hard and too dark. Yeah, I'm covering one right now uh, about Joe Clark. He's from Baraboo, Wisconsin. Um, he was 17 years old at the time. He was kidnapping or luring 13-year-old, 14-year-old boys and breaking their legs because he liked the sound of bones breaking. And the kids are about the same oh, size as my own is son. This, was so this it's been a difficult case? picturing that. <clears throat> oh. It's um, not many people have Sorry, covered it, Sorry, there's a lag. This, but was this covered? This is a... Sorry, small town murder? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, it was. It was yeah. covered by small town murder. It was. And a couple of others. Actually, um, besides it being just a difficult case because of my own son being in my mind when I'm covering it, it was a little eye-opening to see, you know, there was all this controversy with crime junkies stealing people's stuff. And I noticed, because often, I'm sure you guys all do this too, I'll listen to other podcasts that have covered what I'm covering just to make sure that I've, you know, I've caught everything. And what I was noticing was that they're all kind of going down the same track. So like when you create one, when you read, obviously the story is the story but you recreate it in a way that's going to be compelling for your audience. And you're going to do it for me personally. I, I set like an arc of the story and I might go different routes than just linear. Right. Um, or chronological. And I was noticing with these other podcasts that they were all using the same flavor that the original article writer of this particular case, because there's not much information on this bone breaker, Joe Clark case. So for example, they would get to this about three quarters of the way through the podcast and they would bring up this one point. And this point is all deaths. The police look at them like, was it a suicide? Was it a murder? Was it a natural death? Um, and one more. And they all mentioned that, that, that insight. And the insight came from the article that they read. So you say you do your research, but really what you're doing, you're stealing the flavor of whatever that article was in, in the first place. And it, you know, it's bothersome. People think just reading is research, but that's not really what it is when it comes to this. In my opinion, it's grabbing all the information that you can, getting things from the outside that you might be able to put in for flavor, say, and um, collecting all that information and, and creating a new thought out of it. And uh, it's unfortunate. You'll listen to a lot of podcasts that just, if you read the Murderpedia or the Wikipedia, they're following the same, 
the same line that those people did, right? It's like all the kids that used to copy off my homework in, yeah. in school, and they all got the same answers wrong, and the same one's right, and it's <laughs> the same crap, because I never did that in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither, buddy. I got that. We're, we're all talking about, like, the darkest cases. You know, my dark, uh, my favorite Gen Y story, that's probably your darkest. I actually just bought the book about it not too long ago. You recognize that? What is it? Girl, girl in, in the Leaves? Yeah, it's a story. You you guys did the episode oh, about right. that. that Matt is it Hoffman? Hoffman? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, one's that was creepy. Like, that's my favorite of your episodes. I've listened to, like, I usually don't listen to a true crime podcast multiple times, mm -hmm. but I listened to your guys' uh, episode about that story like two or three times. Thank you. Uh, did Jack and Christy, do you guys know this story? No. Oh, I do. I've, I've read that same book. I do. Oh, did you? I, I haven't read the book yet, but it's basically a guy who was, correct me if I'm wrong, Justin or Aaron, he was like, obsessed with leaves and stuff he was like yeah. collecting leaves and bringing them in his house and he ended up like he murdered a, a family or something and he like hid them in like trees he had carved out and stuff yeah he dis uh dismembered the bodies and, and shoved them in hollowed out trees because he was a tree man like a he would cut down trees and do branches and stuff his name is matt hoffman not to be confused with the professional bmx biker uh but you got complaints from him you know it's just when you do a google search you'll okay. that's all you'll get is that other guy um yeah and didn't they like they found a someone like a one of the victims survived and she was like alive in his basement like in on like a mattress made of leaves and all this stuff yeah, it was leaves everywhere. Here, I'm I'm gonna save my background here to one of the images from his house. Uh, yeah, he had like even his walls were made like were just stuffed with leaves. It's the craziest story. It's like I like the Bla the Blair Witch Project's one of my favorite movies, and I felt yeah, that wow. such the bags of leaves. Yeah, <clears throat> weird story, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Every bag is just stacked full of leaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably actually where Justin is, and the other one was his background. Was his <laughs> yeah, he background. changed it. He just deleted Problem. his background. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the truth is out. Got it. So, what about you guys? With your most memorable case, Aaron. <laughs> memorable case. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? How about, how about wow. this? So when it comes to Maybe. horrible cases, um, it, it, it really is hard to say, but the one that really bothered me the most, I guess, when I was doing research on it, and that includes reading books, um, reading articles, looking at photographs, and getting, getting in behind the scenes, just understanding what was going on was the Powell case, Susan yeah. Powell and her sons, and then the nasty a-hole that was responsible for all that and then his father it's something that you can't just write that i mean that is something that is so unbelievable and um to this day as soon as as soon as i start thinking about it i just get really really bothered by it and um, i'm surprised i was able to cover it um yeah for for me i i don't like covering serial killers because it's the same story every time. It's just a trail of dead bodies that this horrible person has created. And there's not, we already know nature versus nurture. We already know all of these answers. It's no longer intriguing for me to figure out why Ted Bundy or John Wayne Gacy or whoever did whatever they did. Um, but when we covered Richard Ramirez, uh, unlike other serial killers, he was a walking nightmare and he did not care and he did not have a specific MO. He would just see you on the street walking into your house and he would follow you and he'd walk in. If there was a man in the house, he would immediately shoot the man, kill him, and then have his way with the woman until he would kill her. And it was just random chaos. And after doing that case, it actually kind of, it was one of the few cases that sort of sat with me for a while. And when I would hear noises at night even knowing that richard ramirez is not going to be knocking at my door uh it freaked me out for like a week or two I, I had to like get up and go sit in the living room and listen to the compressor on my fridge or the ac unit kick on and just kind of memorize all the noises all the house noises and make sure that no one was coming in 
Wow. Ugh. How many episodes I hate to you uh, ruin your evening, Justin, but there might be another one out now. Another serial killer? Like Richard Ramirez. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what, what did you ask? Did you ask how many episodes we have? Yeah, because you guys, you, you do two a week? One a week, one a week. One God, a week. no. Hell no, okay. not two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Well, how many have you done in total? You guys must be like near like we'll, a thousand by now. Are we at like 400, Aaron? If you count our Patreon, we're definitely at 400. Wow. Yeah. It's that would be individual. That's, that's crazy. Picks. And so if somebody were to like, you know, totally steal and rip us off, you know, and copy our podcast, we probably wouldn't even notice because it was like you yeah. know, episode 85. I'd be like, I don't yeah. even remember what that episode was. This is was. a crazy story. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing too wow. is, so if you work on podcasts all the time, it's difficult to listen to other podcasts unless mm -hmm. you make the time for it. And then if you're in the mood, because after you work on podcasting all the time, it's, that can be tricky, but. I know that each of us probably has some podcasts we've listened to. So are, are there any of you been like one or two that you've checked out that you really wanted to recommend? Um, well, I, I said earlier start, at Jordan. the top of this, Jax, oh, am I, did you ask me to start or am I just jumping in? Sure, go ahead. Uh, I said at the top of this, I'm listening to Jack's new show, the 911 Calls podcast, which is incredible. Um, other than that, I've been listening to a lot of old episodes of Coast to Coast. Do you know you guys know what that is? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Somebody took I have a lot of those yeah, on somebody, my computer. <laughs> yeah, well, somebody took all the old episodes of Coast to Coast, which was mm -hmm. like a late night radio show, and they have them on Apple Podcasts. The name of the podcast, I don't know if maybe I shouldn't shout it out because I don't know if it's legit, but they um they set up a channel. It's called Ricola Nights, R E E. KOLA nights and it's just all the old coast to coast hmm. episodes which are really cool like it'll be it's just like basically a guy running a radio station radio show all night and people are calling up you know so they'll call up and be like I was a time traveler and he'll interview them about it and the next call will be like I was attacked by a werewolf <laughs> <Our bell. laughs> so, and he's yeah to me he's one of the best of all time when mm -hmm. it comes to radio I there's no one I like better than our bell yeah. And I know and he died. Didn't he die a few years ago? I think just maybe just last year. And what's what's really crazy is I'm listening to some of the episodes that he did in like, say, like 94. But if he released it as a podcast today, it would be completely current. Like it sounds like the if you listen to UFOs and paranormal stuff, it's just he was just making a really good podcast back then. Yeah. Yeah. He had a real curiosity for those things. So he would often ask the quest questions I wanted him to ask. And I also like the fact that sometimes he'd ask the tough questions of his guests, mm -hmm. which isn't really true so much anymore with that show since he's yeah. gone. Yeah. So, so when the guy called in and said he was a werewolf, Art Bell was right there to ask the tough questions on how do you transform and what time do you transform and how do you go to the bathroom? <laughs> yeah. It was just really entertaining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how about you, Christy? Enough about uh, werewolves. <laughs> Oh, I'm always happy to talk about werewolves. Um, <laughs> I have been listening to this one um, by the New York Times called Rabbit Hole. And it's basically about, um, about how like incel types, I guess, fall down the alt-right rabbit hole and how YouTube has enabled that with their algorithms and all their various kind of changes and I've I really got into YouTube about I don't know a year ago so I'm like I'm like all about this podcast and they're releasing episodes right now and you know they talk about Gamergate and um sorry Gamergate in case you can understand <laughs> my accent I love when you get American <laughs> Gamergate <laughs> and that and they talk about um, PewDiePie and it's it's so great it's really great um, so that's kind of an investigative journalist um, podcast but the other one that um, that I love is Swindled and yeah. that's because um, man that dude is just so <laughs> he's so sarcastic and witty and it gives me a nice break from kind of murdery things yeah. um, you know it's white collar crime and he's 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 just amazing he's so he's so sarcastic 
<laughs> and all, all of his dry little jabs. And I often find myself snorting at what he says. And <laughs> it's just, it's just, a, do you guys listen to Swindled? Oh, yeah, I do. I know you do, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have to. I hear it. Right. Yes, it's, it's really good. Yeah. yeah. It's you know what it feels like? Christy, it feels like um, somebody's sending a transmission out to the in a dystopian society and you're like you're listening to it and, and you're not supposed to be hearing it, you know, and it's kind yeah. of like we do live in a dystopian society right now in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. so it is that yes. Way. Any, yeah, uh, I heard you say that, Jack, on your your episode the other day. Um, yeah, yeah cuz there there's quite a few similarities between you and him, although he is a lot more drier, but you both have a similar kind of sardonic way of looking at things <laughs> we've yeah, talked I, we, we sorry jordan we've talked behind the scenes uh that concerned citizen and i and we might work on something together in the future but we can't quite figure it out so no we'll way that would be amazing yeah i hope so um real quick i gotta give a couple shout outs sugar and spite you're awesome we'll see what happens with the peripheral and hey allison i hope you're doing wonderful <laughs> What about the person? I saw somebody write like, even when Christy freezes, she's gorgeous. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's only because like I'm the only girl. <laughs> yeah, by comparison. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you seeing these comments? Uh, do you have YouTube up on a different screen? Yeah, uh, I just can, opened it on my phone. Yeah, you can open it up, but uh, mute the tab because you'll hear us like 20 seconds later. But you can pull it up and do it. Um, oh wow okay yeah. i have the control window so i can see everything the stream and the comments aaron is god <laughs> i'm not really god i'm just you're up there though i guess <laughs> um the uh i haven't listened to a lot of podcasts lately i've absolutely just like slacked on it um the last few podcasts i have caught uh one was called a uh, hunting warhead yes and was, yeah and it's like them ch ch chasing down um child uh, abuse uh pornographer people online and across the uh the world and that one was really interesting that's um, a canadian show as well i think yeah. i think it is yeah. yeah um other than that man pff, i don't know <laughs> it's, it's like it is that. hard like it is hard to listen to podcasts when you make them like i think the yeah. one way to distract yourself from all the podcasts you want to listen to is start one so i spend so much time listening to my own drafts and all this other stuff i just don't have the time to do it yeah but i think once spotify buys my show for 100 million I'll, yeah i'll have more free time yeah aaron and i are still waiting on that we've been waiting i don't know what Eight years. Every, every time you miss it, like you get a missed call on your phone, you're like, "Who's them?" Spotify. It was Spotify. I know it well, was. That's a, that's a pretty crazy story. If the numbers are true, I'm obviously I'm talking about Joe Rogan signing like an exclusive thing. The numbers that's being thrown around is a hundred million dollars to for him to take a show exclusively to Spotify. I Remember, figure if he get if he gets a hundred million, I think I'm worth ten grand. Yeah, <laughs> I do it. Yeah. Um, but remember when Howard Stern went to Sirius for like mm -hmm. 500 million or some obscene amount? Yeah, it was, I mean, that it was changes, like, you know, that was with the, the great satellite radio boom of the late 90s. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's interesting though. I just I wonder if that'll start happening to other shows if like these if it's going to create competition. Like, I think uh, yeah. if it starts happening, you guys might get the call. I uh, wonder he would have to. Uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> wonder he's going to get the call. And yeah, wonder he's going to get the call because we're owned now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, we got some questions over here. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. What do you think about the comedic true crime podcasts and uh, like last podcast on the left and stuff like that? What do you think of comedy true crime? Why don't you tackle this, Jack, with your comedy true crime show? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will then. I I think I mean there's room for everything. Um, when I did Monstro with Mike Bidet, Sword and Scale, our kind of thing was like we're gonna we're gonna be the opposite to all that stuff. Crime, in our opinion, in that show was like we're we're sick of hearing it all the time, cracking a beer, drinking some wine, joking about it, not touching everything uh, because like you're trying to respect the audience, but really, in our opinion, it's like you didn't have the balls to really go for it. So. 
we went the, the the entire opposite way and it was not received very well uh when you when you create a podcast it's like you know you're gonna it's so horrible you're gonna, gonna want to turn it off it's not the best business model but <laughs> with, with uh with i mean there's room for everything there really is um but i am annoyed by it at times um i do do a comedy podcast with 911 to some degree but what we're trying to do actually is do gallows humor and that's what police officers and paramedics and 911 operators do people in nursing we all do it i was i was involved in, in that those circles most of my life so i think it was done with the right intent and not just uh as massive just filler in there which a lot of them are it's you know, they have there. You could tell they're just going off of Wikipedia and cracking jokes. Like I mentioned before, with this case I'm working on was the case. Um, as long as it's original and, and the research is there, like last podcast on the left, you can tell they do their research. So I, I think it's great, depending on how you how you go about it. Yeah. And their comedy is great. Like they're really they're <laughs> real funny folks. They're doing the research. So it's, I get it. But I've heard some podcasts where I call it like, you know, the, the funny. Uh, actually, I'm not going to say it. But I've, I've heard some podcasts where it's like the research isn't great and I don't find them funny. So at the end, it's just offensive. But um, yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. The, oh, I, sorry, go on. Okay. I'm just thinking like it's we're all just kind of like storytellers and there's so many different. This just shows how many different ways there are to tell the story. There's the investigative style. There's the first person narrative style. There's, you know, um, listen to the found audio like 911 calls and all that style and then of course there's going to be people who do it in a lighthearted way and you know find humor in it but anyway i'm okay with it yeah i um it's not it's personally not something that i particularly listen to but that's not because i have an issue with it it's just that i i prefer um a style that gets right down into the details. And I find sometimes the comedy podcasts are a little bit too like um, bantery, I guess. And, oh, I hate to be that Karen, but um, <laughs> I do, <laughs> I do love last podcast on the left. Um, I don't listen to them a lot anymore. And I, I used to back in the day and I went, went to their show in Toronto in December. And unfortunately I was so burnt out that I fell asleep halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an embarrassment to myself. Um, but yeah, I have no issue with it. I think, I think in terms of like the ethics of it, the ones that understand the ethics are the ones that, that kind of go by um, you can make fun of the offender, but not the, um, not Victim. the, not the victims. Mm -hmm. and, and you so can make I, fun of the investigators too. Right, right, right. Stupid <laughs> stuff. Goodness. Yeah, but I think it's human nature, like Jack said, gallows humor, dark humor. It's, it's the way that humans, um, many humans choose to, to deal with these kind of awful stories and, and their grief involved with it. So, I mean, who am I to say that people aren't allowed to, to go down that route to deal with, with their complicated feelings? Um, absolutely no issues for me, that's for sure. I think it, like the, the debate about if you know, comedic style true crime is appropriate is almost like is true crime. Is it, are we doing like advocacy work or is it entertainment? You know, there's like, it's the same kind of argument, but. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's something that, that I grapple with all the time. Like, you know, my, my podcast, as much as I like to think that it's, um, you know, that I'm raising awareness for this and that and helping this and that it's still an entertainment product um, and it, that's kind of unavoidable unless you're an investigative journalist and you're looking to like uncover details and dig up the truth and solve a case or whatever. Uh, we're, we're all just in entertainment. So um, the best we can do is, is, you know, whenever I'm covering a case, I always have it in the back of my mind. Like if, I mean, usually these days I do have, I do, I'm in contact with the, the families of the victims or the survivor, but um like, what if they were to listen? How would I feel about that? Um, and would I would I be happy with the way the coverage is if I knew that they were going to listen? So, I don't know. That's that's just how I do it. It's yeah. it's it's hard. I, I think that's a sorry sorry Justin. I think that's a good approach. I'll just dovetail off of that. I think it's a good approach to to speak on this type of stuff as if they're in the room with you. 
yeah. like you would say it to their face. And if you wouldn't say it to their face, then then no. Go ahead, Justin. Sorry. Yeah, I, I agree with what you just said. And I in fact, I I'm way nicer online than I am to people face to face. I will say whatever <laughs> I want to somebody's face. I won't say it behind their back. Um, but anyways, when Aaron and I first started, we got crap because there wasn't two friends talking about a true crime case. You had to be in the industry. You had to be a, a detective, an author, something. And so we were kind of crapped on for that. And in the beginning, I would you know, have my nervous laugh where I would talk about the prosecutor doing something stupid and I would laugh about it. And people got really mad at us about that. And so when comedy true crime came out, I was a little jealous, like, screw you guys. Like we had to like sit here and be totally serious. Otherwise, you know, we would get uh, backlash about it. But at the same time, I, I don't really, I mean, I just think if, if it was my loved one, how would I want the story told? And I don't think anyone could do it exactly the way I would want it um, told. So you just gotta be somewhat respectful. And I'm just really glad that, you know, as respectful as any podcast is, it is entertainment at the end of the day. And it's good to admit that. I think that what bothers me more than comedy is somebody who acts ultra serious and like they care more than they actually do. And you can see through it. Like somebody's covering the uh, golden state killer case and they're acting like they're cracking it. Yeah. And, you know, it, like you just be what you are. Like you're not, you're not an investigative journalist. Like a lot of us are just storytellers. We don't have the background and just be honest. So if the humor is honest and, and it's, you know, coming from a good place, fine. Um, but on the other end of it, if you're going to act like you're a friggin' you know, cracking a 30 year old case, then my eyes are rolling up in my head as well. Yeah. Um, we have another question from Allison uh, says, if you could travel back in time with DNA science to solve one crime, which crime would you choose to solve? Or I, I let me just say, if you could just have the answer to any case, which, which one would you do? How about you, Aaron? We got a lot of cases up in that big brain. Yeah, that's just a really, really tough question. I think I'm not sure that I could um, really answer it. Um, it just depends on the day. You know, sometimes I feel like I would like to know the answer to the Jack the Ripper case simply because that's one of the very first cases that ever um, that ever captured my imagination. So sometimes I think, yeah, it'd be nice to know who Jack the Ripper was. But I think at the end of the day with that one, I think we would be underwhelmed with that answer if we had it. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. I think if I had to pick, and, and it's not like it's, it's a case that's really close to me, but I've closely followed the West Memphis Three. And then, I've, and then of course, when Damien Eccles got out of prison, I've been following him ever since. And that case is one where I think like wh whoever did it's going to be a huge shock. Like somebody killed three young kids, three other young kids, the West Memphis three went to prison for it and their conviction against them. If anyone doesn't know the story, like a lot of the evidence against them was the fact that they listened to Metallica and drew, you know, pentagrams in their notebooks. But um, when you look at all the evidence there, it kind of like, I think somebody close to those three young kids was involved. And when you know all the players in that case, you know, it's going to be a shock. I think that's the one, if I had to pick right now with a gun to my head, which yep. Got no head. Like, what case are you solve? Uh, I would pick the West Memphis three. Um, I'd have to. Yeah. Uh, before we continue, a uh, number of people in the comments are talking about the Delphi murders case. Mm. That's another one that you know, if we could answer it. Someone else mentioned Jean Benet, but Jean Benet, there's so much DNA in that case. It, I think it's a bit of a mess. I'm not sure we would need a time machine to go back to answer that one for sure as well. Mm -hmm. The Delphi one, it's just, what kills me is it's, it's, they're so close to getting them. Like they had a picture of the guy, they got his voice. And it, it just, like, I think when that case is solved, it's not going to be a shock because whoever did it, you're probably, they're probably not a suspect or involved in any way. Like I, that's the way I see it anyway. But um, yeah, I just want that solved because like if, you know, cause I live on this planet where that happened. I feel also with the Delphi murders case that the police have been holding back information, but at some mm -hmm. point you think they have to give us something more 
because this is the kind of case that feels like the public would be there to help. If they mm -hmm. just had more information, someone would be able to say, I know who that person is. They're my neighbor. They're my cousin, whatever. But what is the biggest evidence they have? Like, cause the photo is not that clear. He's far away. And then they got his voice on that recording. As far as what I think is what's been publicly released, it's only a short little clip of him. It's, I don't know. I just don't, I, I don't know what the public can do without more information. They have more that they haven't released is the idea here mm -hmm. because the phone was continuing to record for quite Ooh. some time. Okay. So I they have the, more, they just haven't released it. Yeah. I don't know the story well, but. It, did you hear the press conference when they had the press conference? Mm -mm. Well, the law enforcement official in charge of it made some weird comments. One of them was a reference to a book that's fiction, but religious. Mm -hmm. And it almost sounded like he was saying it's in God's hands now. That's how I took it. Wow. Not very reassuring for the family. It wasn't reassuring for me. And I don't think anybody that's been keeping up with that case feels like they're going to be making an arrest anytime soon. That's what's sad about it. Out here, we have the highway of tears. <clears throat> A lot of uh, women getting picked up by truck, or truck drivers, mostly out closer to BC. And um, it's an interesting one because, in my opinion, I think it's uh, multiple killings. I think that there's a there's a bunch of people who have been responsible for this and they'll never put a finger on one person who did it i don't know if you, do you know are jordan or christy are you more familiar with that case with the highway of tears than i am Vaguely. yeah yeah i am but it's like i see it more as almost like a societal issue rather than say than a serial killer like it just seems yeah there's a lot going on i did an episode about um the murder of amber takaro or tuckero i'm not sure exactly how you pronounce her name but she she disappeared and was found murdered in that area. But they, um, there's a really interesting, it kind of similar to the Delphi case. One of the pieces of evidence, they never, they never found her killer, but basically she disappeared, was found dead a couple of years later. But shortly after she disappeared, her brother called her from prison. Uh, he was in prison and prison calls are all recorded. And she answered the phone and it seems like she kept her cell phone open uh, like the line open and she's in a car with somebody and she keeps saying like, where are you taking me? And he's like, I'm taking you into the city. And she's like, this isn't the city. These are dirt roads. Like, where are you taking me? And you hear the call go on and on with her, like yeah. pleading with this guy, like, where are we going? You know, you told me you drive me to the city and you're not. And it's like, I don't, when you hear how calm and collected this guy is, who's probably taking her somewhere to kill her. When you hear how calm and cool he is about the whole thing, you know, it's like not a, his first. It is not his first rodeo. There's no way. And that's just the kind of like the people who are out that way doing those things. It only take a couple of them to amass a pretty big body count. But at the same time, there's other societal issues that put vulnerable people in that area to be preyed upon. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a hard one. Um, they have oh wow just a weird noise um scary <laughs> <laughs> i know that that you know it's a long passage and there's a lot of indigenous people that don't have access to um to public transit or any kind of transit and and therefore are often hitchhiking and because people know that that it is a high uh risk area for for kind of murders i guess and it is the highway of tears um if they see an indigenous person um, hitchhiking, it's kind of easy prey, you know. You, if if you're that way inclined, um, kind of commit a crime and know that it'll just go under that vague highway of tears um, moniker, and and that's it. So I, I definitely think there are there's not just one serial killer. I mean, it's been going on for a while now, and I remember a. Um, there was one guy who they suspect that committed a couple of them and um, he has since passed away. So there's no kind of further investigation there, but um, yeah, it's, it, I don't think that will ever get solved. It's, it's just not, it, I don't think it's a solvable 
kind of case. Yeah, for me, you just have to look at Robert Ben Rhodes in the States. He was a truck driver who was going around and he had a torture chamber in his back cab there, right? I covered it before, called the invisible people. He called them the, the invisible people because you can grab them and no one will, you know, they'll say that they went missing. And he mentioned at some point that I'm not the only one. And uh, I think that's like what you're saying, Christy, is the same situation. You you have vulnerable people on that road. It's a high traffic road for truckers going in and out. And we all know that truckers are creepy as hell. So (laughs) just joking. Some of them are. Some of them are good people, too. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Delivering an asparagus out here. It's wilted, though. Um, Are we ready for another question from the audience? Uh, Cold Truth Podcast says, how do you all keep afloat for the first few years? It's hard and sure doesn't pay. Tips for beginners. Um, I'll go ahead and start here. Uh, One, podcast because you enjoy doing it. Don't podcast for money. Uh, The only way you're going to make money in the beginning is probably some sort of crowdsourcing like Patreon. You're not going to get advertisers right off the bat. Uh, so you just have to build up, um, cross promote with other podcasts and do Patreon or Kickstarter, Indiegogo, whatever. Uh, and, um, I, I guess when I quit my job and Aaron and I were doing it, we went a year before we started getting sponsors, but I've always been a miser and I've worked in it. So I just save up my money and then quit my job and just do whatever I want. But I know that's not an option for every, anyone else. So just, just do it because you like doing it and keep your day job and just do it on the weekends. Yeah, I think um, the first few years, definitely difficult, but I think it's kind of like uh, podcasting has like this sincerity filter built in where if you're not doing it just out of passion and, you know, sincere interest in what you're doing it's so grueling and hard that you're going to quit anyway like people who like i'm sure there's people who hear these stories of people making money and like i'm going to jump in and do it but it's like you're way better off to get a job at a coffee shop or something like that you're way more likely to make good money doing that but um but yeah i would say find like a topic that's something you want to be talking about anyway find a format that's convenient for you like if you have a good buddy like Aaron and Justin partner up and, you know, you're going to have fun talking about something you enjoy talking about. Or if you're the type that wants to just dive into the stories, maybe you want to do an interview based podcast and, you know, you just kind of got to find the topic that works for you, the format that works for you and just do it and, you know, and and keep at it. And eventually it'll take off or eventually it just won't matter because you're enjoying doing it anyway. So if it doesn't take off, who gives a whack? Yeah, I'd agree with what you said. And when, uh, well, to go with what Justin was saying there, you do it for the love and the money may come. And if it doesn't come, then you're still loving what you're doing. And uh, especially now, when Christine and I first started, we started start at the same time, like I said, it was a little easier to break in. And now you really have to be original and you, you have to do something that you truly care about because people pick up on it. I mean, there's so many out there now, but if you're doing something you truly care about, people will pick up on that. Just like a comedian on stage, if he really believes in his jokes and he's learned his material and, you know, he's able to deliver it in a way that sounds natural, people are going to laugh. So if you're delivering it in a way that you are showing that you truly care about what you're talking about, people are going to continue listening. And yeah. the cream, rhyme, the cream rhymes rises to the top too in anything. Like right now there's so many new podcasts coming and but eventually like a bunch of them aren't sincere and they're just going to stop making podcasts and you just stick with it go ahead christy yeah um i was just going to say i i completely echo what you guys are saying i i never like i was very happy in in my career and i never intended to like start a podcast so that i could earn more money and and quit my job um it just I started a podcast because I wanted to learn a new skill set and um, it was just, it was, it was a passion project. And I think like my own kind of um, efforts to improve constantly, I think um, really kind of, I don't know, it kind of comes through because when you listen to the first episode, you can hear a difference between the last episode. You know, that's where where I'm like, okay, how can I do better? And I'm listening to other podcasts and I'm making sure that, you know, the editing is tight. And 
and I'm working a lot. Like, that's the thing. A lot of people think it's so easy. Like, you know, just me and my friend, we'll sit down with a microphone, we'll shoot the shit and then we'll upload and that's a podcast. And it just Te- uh, technically it is, but <laughs> yeah, but I know, but like, you know, people don't, people want things tightly edited. And even if it's a conversational style one, and that's why you guys, uh, Justin and Aaron have gotten as far as you have, because you know what things to expand upon and what things to pull back from. And, um, and, and I just think, you know, as long as you're mindful of what, what your audience kind of wants and your, um, speaking your truth and going, doing it for the right reasons. Um, you can't go wrong, but you know, when, I, whenever I see these podcasts, they're like, Hey, I've just released my first episode. How do I, how do I get a sponsor? And, you know, mm. I'm joining Patreon. Like you have to give people something to want before you go and ask them to pay money for it. <laughs> Chris, Christy, I, I've been to the podcast movement convention <laughs> where it's like hundreds of dollars to get a ticket to get in. And people will come up to me with their business card and say, I'm thinking about starting a podcast. They already have business cards. <laughs> what the, what the I, I had that same experience. I had a guy at, at a podcast convention. He had all this marketing material for the podcast he was thinking about starting. Thinking about. <laughs> I mean, I I swear half of the people that follow me on Twitter are like um, pod faded um, accounts. Like, you know, people who are like, yeah, I'm going to start a podcast. And they, they have a, a Twitter and they have a Facebook and an Instagram and they start up a Patreon. And it's like, well, you haven't even like released an episode yet. Like, let's focus on what really matters here. And <laughs> I started off with a, a Twitter and I think a Facebook and I didn't even have a website for the first eight months. Um, and I, I didn't have a Patreon for the same amount of time either. It's just, I don't know, you have to, you have to focus on what matters. And it's not about the fame and, and the brand. And it's about producing good content that people want to listen to. That's the, the primary thing. And everything else comes after that. Like even to this day, I, I still i am terrible on social media. Um, I forget to post. I... <laughs> I, I, don't, I still don't understand like how how it can help me get new listeners other than promo swaps with other podcasts. So I, yeah. It, and, yeah. and I'm, I'm glad that you said that you're bad at social media because this is, a you know, I'm not going to be pessimistic here, but you can do everything right. You can have, you know, the highest quality audio quality. You can have all these things. You can be hashtagging the crap out of your, your social media, everything right. And you still don't break through. Yeah. And you can do everything wrong and be the next generation. Y. (laughs) (laughs) You know, no, it's, it's true. There's a, there's a big element of luck and timing. And, and certainly like I acknowledge my privilege and the fact that I was in early and I chose the, the name that I chose. Um, if I were to try and do that now, I mean, somebody else would have called their podcast Canadian true crime, likely CBC or something. And, uh, and I, I wouldn't have a show in if I started now. So yeah, a lot of it is luck, luck and timing and, and a snowball, you know, it's a snowball. It's crazy. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny, uh, real quick. Cause when Aaron and I started and everyone started putting true crime in their name and I'm like, man, like generation Y, no one gives a shit about that name. They're all, you know, it's, if you, if it's not searchable by true crime, then how are they ever going to find us? But now in this ocean of, all the podcasts with true crime in their name. I'm like, Hey, we stand out. <laughs> like, that was yeah. <laughs> totally inadvertent, you know? So somebody named their podcast generation Y though, too. You know, there's another generation Y out there, Justin. There's, there's, a, there's a couple. <laughs> yeah. And it's like for teeny boppers or something. It's, it's just for like, <laughs> they're talking about. Teeny you know, boppers. Yeah. It's weird. They're, they're yeah, talking there's about... one like that, but there's also a German podcast with that name. I think. Yeah. I was listening to that for a while. I'm like, what is up with this? These guys suck, man. It's not even true crime. I would just love it if, <laughs> if I would just love it if they subscribed to ours thinking it was the other one. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a question, why are you called Generation Y? Because back then when I asked Aaron if he wanted to start a podcast with me, I just thought it sounded cool. It does, it does sound yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was supposed to be about questioning society. That was it mainly our judicial system 
I love it. <laughs> yeah. It it just works for for you both. I don't even think it, like your name is such a it's kind of like synonymous with like you're like the Kleenex of the Coho <laughs> style true crime. I just that I call those shows Generation Y style shows. Oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you can put that on your website. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, you haven't talked in a while. <laughs> uh, well, back to the subject of what kind of podcasts you listen to. I tend to listen to single narrator podcasts myself. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I don't like the dual hosts. I mean, I, there are great shows out there that have more than one host, but I think for me, it's just better if there's a single person talking. That's just how I am. And there, there are a number of um, podcasts I listen to. And a lot of them are people I know. And I listen to uh, Already Gone and now Crime Lines and Mens Rea, Murderous Minors, writing about crime, just different shows that are single hosted, but they're covering stories. Most of them are stories we would never cover. And I think that helps too. Yeah. Justin? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't what? remember you saying you listen to any podcasts. Oh, I, you I said you didn't really listen that often. So. I, I said hunting warhead. Uh, I, I'm just drawing a blank right now. Um, on um, but anything. what about you could talk to? Uh, because we had a question about it in the chat. Is yeah. someone was asking about deadly misadventures? So what's oh. the current status? <laughs> um, so we did season one, and that's all out from behind the paywall. Finally, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of against paywalls. Uh, we are in talks about season two. Um, episode one would probably be that uh that flat earth that flat earther guy that shot himself up in a rocket like Wiley oh, yeah. Coyote and killed himself. Um, but it's all kind of up in the air to see if we did well enough with the first season if Wondery would want to pick up a second season or if we shop it around. So it might be a while. And at the time we recorded Deadly Misadventures, there were a lot of, I won't say contract disputes, but it took a while for us to figure out the contracts and everything. And at the same time, I was moving from one house to another. So we wanted to get it all done like six months before, but then the contract didn't come in until right when I was in the middle of my move. So I was literally recording in three different recording spaces, which you know that just plays havoc on your voice and sound and everything. And it was actually one of the most stressful things I've ever done, uh, trying to put out eight episodes on top of doing Gen Y and Peripheral and everything else. Um, so now i am got more free time, I'm settled in my new house, but we'll just see if, uh, let me just put it this way. I don't want to sound shitty, but it, it would take a lot of incentive for me to do that again. <laughs> wow. That sums it up nice. It sounds like a spoiler alert, Justin. <laughs> so, they need to. What if Spotify calls you? <laughs> exactly. I would drop everything. <laughs> you know what? They, they asked Joe Rogan why he thought he was going to be getting all that money. Why that show blew up so big and his answer i think is spot on because joe rogan really does seem to approach every subject individually yeah. and honestly and i think people love that mm -hmm. it doesn't what? feel like he is a democrat or republican or has some, not <laughs> uh some sort of allegiance to some book that gives him an outline of what he's supposed to say and do do you know what i mean he's like a free thinking creature that just goes out there and asked question, he asked the questions and he wants to learn. And I think that comes across very genuinely. So despite some of the controversy he's had, I think he's represented himself pretty well in that Spotify deal that just drives it home. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron, we were talking earlier about Art Bell. He had, Joe Rogan has a lot of the same characteristics. Like he's, it, it's like, it doesn't matter who he's talking to. He manages to connect with them and give them a real comfortable place to tell their story whatever that story is. I'm always impressed by how Joe Rogan's able to do that, but I get why people don't, not everybody digs him. I get that. I well, don't, to. I can't stand him. <laughs> <laughs> Rogan, you can't stand Rogan. Uh, uh, he's, yeah. I, I, one time, cause 
I was in the last podcast on the left Facebook group and everyone's like, oh, you gotta listen to this Joe Rogan. So I'm like, okay. So, and the first episode I listened to happened to be Jordan Peterson, who is this yeah. Can- Canadian douchebag. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> and all I heard was Joe Rogan just agreeing with everything that he said. And, um, you know, he's got some, Jordan Peterson has some very controversial and, uh, transphobic views and I did not appreciate the conversation so that was the only episode I've, I'd listened to and also he's very dude bro like just yeah but man you, like I'm just like Ugh. but but you got to realize that Rogan's interviewed like thousands of people and I, you I literally just listened to one episode of a, of I know, a guy that you didn't like give I, him another chance i, I agree mean, she mm. is wrong justin i agree opinion. <laughs> I, I mean you know what's funny is i'm really into comedians and mma but i don't listen to any joe rogan episodes where he has a comedian or M- mma fighter on there i listen to it when he has these weird scientists or survivalists and just oddball stuff i love the the oddball stuff that he does um so like he what's, inter- a, what's one that i could actually no forget it i just don't like him i just <laughs> <laughs> it's almost fine. had her it's all good it's yeah all good. i wouldn't tell you to listen to him if you don't want to but yeah. if you ever just got a crazy idea all right i'll give him another chance listen to his interview with anthony bourdain yeah. oh yeah that's oh, an amazing episode i've actually i've heard of that i've yeah. heard of his episode with that great yeah. suggestion aaron <laughs> what about oh, this God. Uh, Aaron and Justin, like in your earlier days, you guys used to do kind of like interview style episodes with other people. Are you ever going to do something like that again? Or are you down to pretty much just... We're doing it now. Yeah? <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, right now. We're interviewing Jordan, Christy, <laughs> oh, come on, Luna. Um, now, I remember like some of your old episodes with like yeah. authors and stuff, and I dug them. Um, We still do on occasion. Uh, I mean, I, I've interviewed... Uh, the evil genius director uh mm-hmm. i've interviewed uh um what's his name josh zeman is that his name from okay. uh killing season and cropsy and all those documentaries mm-hmm. uh aaron just interviewed um the the wrongfully convicted kid that's a lawyer now uh, the jewish kid from new york <laughs> what's what's his name aaron i'm gonna leave you hanging John. Yeah, i'm loving this <laughs> that guy uh that guy I'll tell you, one of them that i interviewed was mark uh howard yeah he's a professor and he's the reason why that guy uh got out of prison probably because he worked so hard to get the information out yeah. and to connect people with the attorneys um it's such an overwhelming job and I can't believe that, you know, more people don't have someone like that in their lives. It's really uh, unfortunate. You you talk about people that are um, on the fringes of society, you know, um, they don't have people looking out for them in the way that, you know, perhaps uh, Jordan would. You know, if Jordan goes missing, he'd have a whole movement to find him or to bring someone to justice, right? But there are people that just don't have that. And if you don't, um, well, the system's not really fair. Um, one of the things that I've read about recently was why don't we have a change in the laws where if you don't have any money, why can't the system be a little more fair when it comes to paying to get out? You know, uh, unless you commit a horrible enough crime, uh, most people can just pay the money and get out. But if you're poor, the system now is swallowing you. Aaron, you're talking you good attorney. You're, you're talking nonsense, common sense now. You need to just stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Fairness in our judicial system? What? Well, I've been sitting here quiet most of the time. I'm bottling stuff up. What do you want? <laughs> he was waiting for that. <laughs> Dropping the knowledge. <laughs> All right. Someone spoiled it for you, Justin, in know. the chat. Oh, what they say. Marty Tankliff. Marty Tankliff, that guy. So we have done some interviews and we usually only do an interview when it's a kind of a big deal of somebody that we think can probably tell the story better than we can, or at mm-hmm. least give their side of things. Uh, but for the most part, most of the time, especially in the beginning or not in the beginning, but when we like got big, but hadn't quite gotten as big as now, uh, anytime we did interviews, people hated it. Absolutely Actually, hated it. 
Yeah, after I asked you that question, I opened up YouTube and one of the comments that I saw someone write was like, I love that Gen Y doesn't do interviews. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, <laughs> and especially if we interviewed any female on the show, oh my God, it was misogynistic crap. But oh, it was, yeah. but it was oh, from no. both males and females, like just going, what the fuck was that lady saying? Blah, 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 why'd you have her on the show? And it was like, oh my God. So we kind of shied away from interviewing people. Wow. I remember the reason I asked, I remember a series of yours I really like, and this is years ago. And it was like, AC firefighters. It to, no, it was, uh, it was, oh. t- it was Ted Bundy. Like oh. so people. Yeah. Yeah. I think Sorry. it was an author who had investigated Ted Bundy's case. Kevin, Kevin Sullivan. <laughs> I'm going back a long, like I'm thinking yeah. this is like four or five years ago, but I remember yeah. really digging it. Kevin, Kevin is an interesting fellow. Uh, but I will say that he, he does write some of the best books on Ted Bundy. Um, but you know, when it comes to Ted Bundy, Jack the Ripper, or any of these big name serial killer people, there is such a, I don't know, what would you call it, Aaron? Like a, a pecking order or controversy, like between authors and, and oh. whatnot. I mean, it's a pissing match. You call it a yeah, pissing match. Pissing match is a great word for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually fell we fell into one, Christy, when we did our live event this summer. Wasn't there what the topic we were doing uh, was written by an author, but then some other group was like threatening to like sue or something? What was the story with that? Oh, uh, are you talking about the Donnellys? Yeah, yeah, wasn't it? But that was <laughs> that was like a pissing match between yeah, something, wasn't it? It was. Um, yeah, that that was a whole thing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's this historic case from Canada. Uh, It's basically, you know, Irish immigrants came over, got into a, you know, kind of a huge fight. There was a big brawl. A bunch of people got murdered. It was horrendous. And the descendants of that family um, have kind of taken up this fight. And anyone who tries to cover that case, they accuse them of plagiarism and getting the details wrong and all these crazy things. And, yeah, yeah that it, <laughs> and we it, we covered that case in front of a live audience yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and we had uh, the guy who wrote the script for us nate henley he had wrote a book about about this story and he was already had a battle going on with them so yeah anyway, he I, did because the case is actually like in canadian lore i guess is called um the black donnelly's and this family has decided that they've trademarked that name the black donnelly's and so anyone else who covers the story cannot use that and so we were very careful not to use that phrase in in our kind of advertising of the event and also my episode that i released i was just the donnelly's i had to remove the mm-hmm. black donnelly's because of their trademark I'm like, who has this much time? Like this case happened in the 1800s. Like who has this much time to go and, I don't know, people. Yeah, and there's so many cases that are like that. Like you can't touch Moore Murray. You can't touch Adnan. You can't touch all these different cases because it's just not worth the backlash and the headaches and the the crap you're going to deal with. Yeah. Um, You know, and I actually told Aaron, I want to, revisit the Stephen Avery case because I just want to piss people off with my opinion Um, but (laughs) he's he's kind of reluctant (laughs) so yeah what is your opinion Um, we must know oh if we could go back and use DNA to solve a case oh wait DNA already solved that case (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's that's my opinion I, yeah but wow. t- talking about like case when like cases that are tough to cover it's what i find what ends up happening is a lot of cases they get like a community around them and it, yeah. for whatever reason it just becomes toxic and every example i've seen it is toxic or just about to become toxic the Mora yeah. murray case the like, good god go on twitter and just put in the name Mora murray and read some of the comments and you'll uh you'll throw your phone into uh rice oh yeah we've we've already (laughs) gotten backlash from even uh, you know talking to tim and lance a few times and then there's the whole james renner controversy and all that and i'm just like man like is this just come on people insanity be civil (laughs) you know if we nitpicked every single person we ever met if you found one thing about them we wouldn't like anybody 
Yeah, it's That's like Jack wouldn't even be here. Like he wouldn't. <laughs> well, yeah, Jack. Jack wouldn't have been here first. Yes. But. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a question for Jack in here um, somewhere. Wait, I, it was what's your problem? Is what they wrote. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, it, it said what's your problem, Jack, and then it was followed by uh, a question about the feedback he gets about his show. Is it mostly positive? The, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my facebook i mean i just uh, i'm constantly in battle with people and all that stuff i've made the mistake often in getting battles back and forth with people that are accusing me of things that i'm not uh guilty of in my own mind um but you know i do have a fan base that, that understands where i'm coming from like my my podcast dark topic was birthed from an altercation in a bar where i was talking about the btk case to a guy he asked me about what i was doing and his wife stood up and left and then him and his brother turned on me and I said, are oh, you going to sick your dog on me to the one guy? And everybody stood up and we're going to get in a brawl. And I got kicked <laughs> out of the bar. They pulled me out to save me. So Dark Topic was birthed from that where I said to myself, I want to make a podcast where it's like you're sitting in a bar with a guy and you want to hear it. And, uh, you know, it, so if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you're free to leave. But you can't drag me out of this bar because I own it. You know what I mean? <laughs> So yeah. yeah, the feed the feedback the feedback oftentimes is is pretty rough, but I think it's a misunderstanding of where I'm coming from. I try to go from the perspective of the killer and the perspective of the victims, and I'm a storyteller. I'm not an investigative journalist, like I said before. I'm just trying to give uh, t take people like the operator from 911 podcast says that what I do is I take the crime scene photo and I shove your face in it, and the intention there is not to disrespect the victim or, or to glorify the killer. It's actually to respect what went down when somebody is murdered. It's a very intense situation. And we often will throw out things like, well, she was raped and murdered. Okay. That is, there's a lot more going on there. And when you do something like that to somebody, my podcast, dark topic, I try to get as close as I can and, and uh, put my own feelings into it and picture my wife or picture my kids in that situation. And sometimes it goes a little too far for people. So. That's yeah, you're, you, you just you also you don't filter yourself like i'll sometimes listen to your show being your friend like i'm listening sometimes and i'm just like oh my god like what is he thinking the episode of the 911 calls podcast about the mommy blogger uh, at one point i was just like these guys are just like there's uh, bombs it. are gonna go off on their social media accounts but mm -hmm. anyway yeah you gotta take risks i guess i mean you'll you'll grab a bunch of people that that get what you're doing and then you'll you'll get a bunch of people hating you that's why I go with Jack Luna, because that's not my real name. Although, I don't know if you guys have ever had this situation happen to you. Somebody messaged me. Uh, they were from Iceland. And it was a picture of Google Maps of my house. Nice. And, and, and the caption below said, I guess you're not as paranoid as you think you are. <laughs> yeah. So. Did you ever that's, that's find a... out what happened with that? No, no, I, uh, no. No, I mean, that's, you know, I got two hatchets underneath my feet right now. I'm hoping well, it shows you up. You know what um, What happened to me once is I uploaded, it was, this was when I was on a prior network. And one of the default settings when you uploaded a file was it included like geo data or whatever. And in the file, it showed where it was uploaded from. And it just so happened that I uploaded the file when I was at a friend's house. But if you went on my website, you could see a map and see like the pin on my friend's house. There you go. And I, like, wow. I even called my network that was, that was hosting it being like, what is going on? And, you know, and it was, uh, it was some glitch that made it so that it, it enabled that feature on everybody's um, files and shows that were much bigger than mine were probably pretty pissed. You know, what made me feel better was I went to um, a meetup with Mike Boudet, Sword and Scale in New Orleans, and I walked into it and I was like, are you worried? Cause at the time, you know, he's always in shit, but like at the time he was really in shit. And uh, I'm like, you know, are you worried about who's going to show up here? And Mike's kind of just like, well, if it happens, you know, we got something to talk about in the podcast. I'm like, well, not if you're dead, dude. If you get freaking stabbed. <laughs> yeah, but, oh. yeah. Yeah. Anyways. So, Jordan, mm -hmm. what do you have cooking up in the future? Do you have anything going on? My next two episodes are going to be. Um, so I, I'm at the top of this. We talked about the the shooting rampage in Nova Scotia. Uh, I've done one episode about it so far. That's I called it like the timeline. And it just basically goes through the timeline of what happened during the 13 hour killing spree. My next two episodes are kind of a two parter about all the red flags from the gunman's past that have since surfaced. 
And those are going to come out. The first one should be out tomorrow. The second one will be out over the weekend. And it's basically just going through a series of bizarre things he's done in the past that make you go like, this guy's always been a nut. So um, yeah, that's what's coming next for me. What do you have coming up, Christy? Well, I am partway through um, releasing a three-part series about uh, a little boy who was, um, he, he basically had bacterial meningitis and his parents are anti-vax and anti-medical care and did not take him to the hospital when he should have, despite showing um, multiple terrible symptoms of bacterial meningitis you know he was his back was arched so much that he couldn't get into his car seat and there was all this kind of stuff and the poor little kid ended up dying and uh, his parents now say there's been some massive conspiracy and you know the government tried to murder their child and um it's it's been a whole thing so um i'm about to release my third part where for once, I kind of give my opinion a little bit. Um, so that should be interesting. And th this guy, the father, has a, a following online. And I haven't heard from him yet, but um, I know he is aware that I'm covering the case. And I did contact him. Um, and he never got back to me. So I'm, I don't it's know. Not a good sign. No. <laughs> so trust, I, trust me. I don't, yeah, you know. Um, yeah. So when this, when part three is released on June the 1st, um, it should be interesting. I Maybe he's waiting until he listens to all three parts, but, you know, I, I covered it in a very unbiased way and uh, a neutral presentation. Um, and then I get kind of give my opinion at the end, but the opinion is based more on um, the conspiracy theory side of things. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So, but let but later on this year, I'm going to be covering Bruce MacArthur. So, and it's so weird by a strange twist. One of my mummy group friends' husband is best friends with the lead investigative um, detective. So, um, he has agreed to speak with me. So that'll be interesting. It's not really something that I've ever done and or sought out. So that will be coming later this year. So. We've just been emailing today, actually. Oh, I don't know how I get myself into these situations. <laughs> it's all those mommy groups. This is what happens. I know anyone who shits all over mommy groups, like does not know what's going on. Like, those are connections. Get... Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but besides Christy, I mean, before that shooting went down that Jordan was talking about, MacArthur, wasn't that the biggest news for a long time up there? Yeah, yeah, it really was. Yeah. Yep, and that that's a couple of years old now. Um, yeah, I don't I don't really think there's been anything big since MacArthur. Uh, was it the van attack after that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The Toronto van attack. The the uh, incel who uh, plowed his van into a bunch of um, people downtown. Um, yeah, his his trial was actually supposed to be coming up this year but it hasn't gone ahead so obviously That's... because of covid and christy christy remember we were at the first true crime podcasting event that same night is when it happened yeah no that's no, right. no that and wasn't Jordan. the toronto van attack oh, that sorry, was, was... The, the shooting at the danforth yeah. oh yes that's okay right. yeah right. wasn't that crazy yeah. yeah like i'm never in toronto at night and obviously neither are you two because you don't even live in toronto so i yeah, that was that was a very strange. We came out of our live event and there'd been a, a shooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack, what's coming up uh, down the pipeline for you? Wow. Aside I'm from some angry emails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing dark topic. I'm doing number one calls podcast, but now I have my brother Leroy coming up with a podcast yes. as well, and it's called uh, "Excuse Me, That's Illegal." Uh, <laughs> he's, he's, I'm so excited for this. What's so the premise? <laughs> the premise is it's true crime, but it's the lesser known cases. So, you know, like the woman who took a dump in the Tim Hortons and threw it at the guy. Uh, there's another he, one that he's that we're working. Sorry, go ahead. He told me it was a deep dive into minor crime. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, 
And there's another one we're working on right now called the Mad Pooper. It's a woman who was like jogging and kept on taking dumps on people's lawns and she was getting caught by cameras. And then once it started hitting the paper, she disappeared. And his theory is that she started doing it at night and stopped wiping her butt. So it looked like dog crap. So he that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> this all sounds like gold. Thank you. Yeah. Excuse me, that's illegal. Keep keep your eyes open. I got a few other ones coming down right now. I'm trying to create my own Wondery because Wondery won't sign uh, what's going on right here. What about this? Uh, what The 911 Calls podcast has to do something about the um, that 911 call from the racist lady last, you know, two days Eventually. ago. Amy Cooper. Yeah, in the park, right? Where she kept yeah. on accusing the guy and saying African-American man is a cost to me and all this stuff. It's, yeah, it, I've it, never seen anything like it. I've never been so upset staring into my cell phone. That's oh. happened many times. It's yeah. just to see it like that. Like it's, you get so much of the video. And then I, I read an article about the guy um, who filmed it. Yeah. And he, it's like, he used to write for Marvel. He's a Harvard graduate. And he, uh, he is like a chairman of like this bird sanctuary group. He seems like the best guy ever. And he encountered the most venomous, rotten person. I hate her more than anyone yeah. else. She acts like on the call, like it's escalating and he's, yeah. he's filming her and there's obviously no escalation happening. He's like, fine, go ahead. And she's like, oh, there's an African-American man in the park. And it's it, like, there's nothing yeah. happening. She's that was the, her dog the whole time. The color of his skin. That was the escalation. Do you know the yeah. video, Aaron? Do you know mm -hmm. the video, Aaron? Do you know what we're talking about? I've seen, there are several videos like that. Okay. Just different women. They were all women, the ones I've seen. <laughs> They're all, yeah. all white women. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> yeah this and one was a, a few It's days always ago. in a park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand the deal, but we're, again, we're capturing moments that we wouldn't have known about otherwise, but we know happen. Yeah, it happens and, all the time. And, and, but it's and just, the, oh, I was going to say the dude that it happened to, he's gone out now and he's telling people, chill out. Her life is ruined. Quit threatening her life and quit the pile on now. Like mm -hmm. justice is done. Leave her the leave her the hell alone because it's to the point where people are doxing her and threatening her life and all this. Stuff. Oh, it's, that yeah. I think it's even character. beyond that. Yeah. yeah. She, oh yeah, he's like a great. Seems like a great person. Yeah. But she like her employer has spoke out and said they canned her and apparently yeah. she even had to give the dog back. Like in the video, she's like kind of like choking the dog. She's, yeah. yeah. But oh, you man. hear. I dug oh. deep into this and. Like, did you see the other posts on Twitter where she had an Instagram account for the dog and every single week it seemed like the dog had this crazy new injury and there were like four different posts of injuries that the dog had, including one where she said the dog choked and she gave him CPR. And meanwhile, when she's on the phone uh, to 911, she's like literally holding the dog by his collar and he's choking. Uh, so I, I'm like, I'm glad that, that they took the dog back. Like yeah. she, It's so hard. I'm in two minds about it because on the one hand, while she deserves all of this that's happening and I think she needs to be made an example of, like at the same time, she's now at a very high kind of risk for suicide because she's yeah. been cancelled and cancelled in a big way and people who've been canceled in similar ways have, have committed suicide. I'm thinking about that um, porn star. Um, August, August Ames. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, this is the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, oh, it's, it's really hard. I'm like, she needs to learn a lesson. She needs to have <laughs> ramifications, but her name is now mud. She's lost her job. And yeah. I, I just hope that she, she learns a lesson and, and can re recover from this. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah. sad. <clears throat> what it sounds I'm like, Chris. Yeah. What yeah. what it sounds like is uh, Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Yes. Yeah. And you know, it's when you like you you kill off your your father. He's dying, and like you get all the attention from it through social media or whatever. Mary Beth Tinning did it. She killed yes eleven of her kids or something. Yeah. And she was just vibing off of the attention she got from the kids dying before they figured it out. So yeah, I mean, it, it always goes too far. Um, I don't think anybody deserves that kind of thing. And that's that's my problem is that the, the social justice, not even social justice, but any online public shaming mob is exactly that. It's a mob and everyone wants their own pound of flesh and they never, you know, it's never just like this is what this person did wrong and they should be called out for it. It always goes way beyond that to the point where they have to make stuff up. They have to threaten their lives. So I'm against these pile ons 
yeah. even though I don't like what the person did or said or whatever, I'm totally against the the mob mentality. Right. It's well, almost like I the, wish the same it could person. have gone to, you know, the defense of him. That's what I wish it would have gone to. I mean, she's not going to change her opinion, but at least that guy knows everyone has his back. Yeah. Uh, people are impressed in the chat, Justin, how quick you pulled out that porn star's name. Uh, we covered her on Patreon, but I am oh, a fan too. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, she's actually, um, she's actually grew up very close to me. She's from yeah. Nova Scotia originally yeah. and changed her name and moved uh, to the U.S. to become a star. But there's a podcast about her called The Last Days of August. Yeah, about le the events leading up to her suicide. That yeah, and that's uh, uh, John Ronson who did. Yeah, you so Butter. you've been publicly shamed. And yeah, my only my only complaint about the last days of August was he kind of gives a pass to all these people that were telling her to kill herself on Twitter, mm. and he's like, well, she was already dead. She had actually killed herself hours before they tweeted tweeted these things, so they get a pass. And I'm like. <laughs> like, yeah. like dude no it's it was bad yeah, well i want to thank good. uh i want to thank all of you for showing up it was great to talk with you jordan uh, christy we gotta leave <laughs> time's up <laughs> get the f out <laughs> now we can't stay here all night yeah okay but um yeah uh and those for you uh for those of you asking about what when the next stream will be it'll be next wednesday and I think you'll be very surprised by who we have on next week, but I'll keep Dan it a Sipansky. surprise till Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Cats out of the bag, Dan Zapanski. Amy Cooper. Yeah. Uh, here's, a, here, here's one clue. It's not Dan Zapanski because he doesn't want to work at Cam. Yeah, I'm so excited to find funny. out. Well, they uh, got big well, boots to fill. Thanks for tuning in. Yay. Thank you so much, guys. It's been fun. And thank, thank you. you so much for all of you for your support. And a shout out real quick to Kara Coslow and to Esther Ludlow of Yay, Once Upon yes. a Crime. Yeah. Woohoo! Night, everybody. Night, everyone. Bye-bye.